Okay, well, good evening and uh, welcome uh, everybody in their, in their viewing place, which is your chair or maybe you're standing up. Hell, I don't know. I can't see you. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Uh, all right, well, today uh, we're going to do uh, Simplifying Radicals Part 2. Because I made one video and I thought to myself, that's not enough. It's not enough. And neither is two, so we'll have to make a third. But uh, for now, uh, what's different between this one and the last one is that this time we're going to add some variables inside that radical sign or that radicand. And we're going to simplify ourselves some radicals, which I like to do. And the other day I had a student tell me, oh, Mr. Miller, I don't like simplifying radicals. And I was like, excuse me? Excuse me, excuse, what? Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, what? Excuse me, excuse me, what? I, I mean, I didn't even know what to say. What do you say to something like that? What do you say to something like that? I, you know, I, I, I'll tell you what I say to something like that. I say, all right, let's, let's chill for a second here. And then let's simplify some radicals right there. <laughs> what the hell else is there to say? Ain't nothing to say. Let's just get it. Let's do it. Uh, we're going to simplify this. Now, the one thing you might notice, we got a number and a variable there. So this is my, my favorite first move. I like to remind myself that that's multiplication. I like to remind myself that that's multiplication. And I rewrite it. I go like this. I say, well, that's the square root of 36 multiplied by the square root of x to the 6. And so just by rules, I'm taking out the, the numbers first, and then I'm going to roll over and deal with the variables. So here we go. And if there was another variable, like y, I would just have this multiplied by y, and I would tr do the x's before I did the y's. Uh, but I only got one variable here, so let's roll. Here, first thing, this is the square root of 36. Hey, that's a perfect square, and part of me, I just can't help myself sometimes. I have to show you why uh, the square root of 36 is 6. I just have to. So this is a beautiful symbol, this radical sign. And uh, here's what it does. The number up there, see, it, it's a, I, I like to say it's, it's like a timesy sort of counting. So this tells you how many counts. So this is two counts. We're going to start here. We're going to go one, two. The number inside the radicand tells you what you're counting to. So in this case, we're counting to 36. So let's write a 36 here. We start at 1. Now you have to know that we're doing, it's, it's times the counting. It's like times 2, times 2, times 2, times 3, times 3, times 3. It's not an addish sort of counting. And so what the radical sign does is it says, in this many counts, we're counting to that. What must we be counting by? And so if you think about it, if you keep multiplying by 6 over and over again, you know, and you could extend this out further, well, 1 times 6 is 6, and 6 times 6 is 36, so the square root of 36 must be 6, okay? So that's 6. Now we got to do the same thing with x to the 6th. Now I'll show it to you on a number line really quick, and then we'll ditch the number line because it's too slow, but either way, let's do this. Same thing, it's a square root of some variable raised to the sixth power. And so uh, I got to go here, and I got to go x to the sixth. So I want to end up at x to the sixth. I want to get there in two counts. What must I be counting by? Well, actually it turns out that if you multiply, and I'm just going to use a dot for multiplication, by x to the third, one times x to the third is x to the third, and then x to the third times x to the third is x to the sixth. <laughs> yeah, all right? Because that means that the square root of x to the sixth must be x to the third. And so it's just x to the third. And that's your answer. And it's not a coincidence that that number is one half of that number. When you see that pattern, you could just knock that out in a second uh, later once, once you're ready to roll. Once you're ready to roll, if you see something like x to the 10th, you know it's going to be x to the 5th. You all know it's going to be x to the 5th because it's always half of that number. It's always half of that number when we're square rooting. All right? So that's a rule you can just remember 
Uh, I just can't help myself. I had to put it on a number line. I think it's so beautiful. Uh, so anyways, uh, here we are. And uh, just a quick review of exponents. Hey, look at this. When you multiply uh, bases that have exponents, what you do is you just add the exponents. So 3 plus 3 is 6. And so any type of square root, that, that, that's why, uh, or, or you can think that when you square root this, you're always going to get uh, uh, half of it, because to get to that number, you doubled it. Uh, which, which, well, saying, saying too much at one time, but uh, I'm going to move on to the next problem. I'm going to move on to the next problem. Screw it. I've said enough. I've said enough, and I'll, I'm sure I'll say more on the next one. So let me get rid of this. I might come back to this beautiful number line, so I'll just erase it. What the hell? If I need another number line, I'll just make the damn number line. That's what I say. That's what I say. All right, here we go. Let's do uh, maybe one more. Huh? Let's go 50. What is that noise? You hear that noise? That ain't me. I don't know what that is. That was a loud noise back there. All right, so now it's 50 times x to the 10. So once again, you need to hit pause on that computer because you gotta try this problem before I do it. Because if you haven't tried it, you'll just sit there and nod your head and be like, oh, that makes sense, Mr. Miller. Oh, that makes sense, Mr. Miller. But how the hell do you know it makes sense? If you haven't tried it first, you gotta try it first. Pause and try it first. Okay, Mr. Miller, I will try it first as long as you never ever jump up and down again. Deal. Deal. All right. Let's go with a little unpause here. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same first step I did last time. It's not an accident. I am very, uh, what, what can you say? Oh, what's the word? Predictable. Mr. Miller, I knew you were going to do that because last time you did that and you tend to do the same thing again and again. All right, so the square root of 50. See, this ain't a perfect square. That's not a perfect square. We know it's really, really, really close to seven because you know I was going to throw this thing on the number line, okay? Just got to do it because uh, this is a second root. So we're going to do two times the counts and we want to get to 50. That's what we want to get to. That's what we want to get to, but look, if we count by times seven, seven times seven is seven, then you get to 49, that ain't 50. So it's not seven. You could try eight, eight, and there's eight times eight, that's 64. That also, um, so it ain't eight. So it's really, really close to seven. And so like, I was an engineer for a while, so and we, we just needed to be 10% correct. So we probably uh, would have just called that seven. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, I, I'm not now. So here's the deal. Two ways to solve this thing right here. Two ways that I'm gonna say, I don't know, maybe there's more ways. Uh, the first way is, is the search for perfect squares. You see, we're gonna try to simplify it. And to simplify it, it's just simply this. It's simply this. It's simply take that number inside that radicand and try to make that number as small as you possibly can make it. And let me tell you, you heard it from me. If there are no factors that are a perfect square, that number ain't going anywhere. It ain't going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. All right. But 50, come on, people. Come on, people. 50, come on, people. Look at that. That's 25 times 2. That's good stuff, right? That's 25 times 2. So the 50 has become 25 times 2. Now, the square root of 25 is perfectly balanced. I'm going to draw a balance there with the number 5. It, it, it's not like similar to 5. It is 5. The square root of 25 is 5. And so that is more is considered more simplified because we have a better understanding of the number five. If I tell you what you, you owe me five dollars, you'd be like, okay. If I tell you you owe me the square root of twenty-five dollars, you have to do a little bit of math and say, oh, that's five. So 
this becomes five root two. Hollow. Let's go this route. Now we can keep our little cheat code from last time that says if, you, if you've got a variable raised to a power and you're square rooting it, then for sure it's going to be, and I'll, I'll use, um, I'll keep using blue here, uh, for sure it's going to be x to the fifth because you could just take that number and divide it by two. Uh, but I, I got to show you on the, on the number line because I want you to I, I want you to know that you ain't doing voodoo here that there's a reason for it and, and actually I've never never done voodoo before I don't know if there's a reason for that or not so I, I'm not an expert not an expert but I am an expert in this that's two that number two means two times he counts one, so one two and I got to get to x to the ten. And I want to start at 1. And so in this case, I'm going to use a dot for a multiplication. If I multiply by x to the fifth, and I could just, you know, I don't have to stop there, but so if it was a, a that was a 3, I would take it out to, to the 3, but it's a 2, so I'm stopping there. 1 times x to the fifth is x to the fifth. x to the fifth times x to the fifth is x to the tenth. So uh, the square root of x to the tenth is x to the fifth. And again, largely because when you multiply those two, you add the exponent, That's, which gives you x to the 10th. Okay. Now, as just far as, I mean, this is right, that's beautiful. Now, we wouldn't write it like that. You might, you might lose some credit. Uh, your teacher's not, not, not hating on you or anything, but, uh, you know, there's a certain way we write things. Notation matters. So, uh, the, the coefficient first, the variable second, the radical third. Holla! Whew, okay, I don't know how much time we got. I don't know how much time I, I, I've taken. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just do a little quick reminder. Of, I don't, I, I'm not going to put this, these problems here, but hey, if it's odd, I mean, we know it would be to the 6.5, because we know we could divide it by 2, but uh, it's not considered simplified if we got a decimal there. So in this case, if your variable's raised to an odd power, all you do is you back it up one, just back it up to the nearest positive number. There it is. Holler. Okay. Or I could show it one other step here. So it'd be like x to the 12th times x. So I ain't changed nothing yet because these two are equal. Okay. Because like I showed you over there, uh, if you got x to the 12th times x to the 1, you add. That gives you x to the 13th. So if you have it to an odd, here's what you do. You back it up one, so you got the biggest even number you can get. Then you uh, separate them, and then use that trick where you can divide it by two. The 12 goes there, and you still have this x to the one. I wrote the one, you don't need to write the one. I, right. But I wrote the one. And now that I've written the one, I'm trying to hit play, and it ain't playing. And you know what they say, if the music don't play, then it ain't supposed to play. If it was supposed to play, it'd play. So, so I'll take it as a sign that uh, my, my, my moment here is over. But the good thing about recording things, you know, sometimes uh, you never know, you're going to help. You know, maybe I, I, I record it here today on what, March 3rd, year 2017, here about uh, four. 425 there I think it's about and uh, I gotta head home but uh, I, ho I hope this has done you well I promise I'll make more simplifying radical videos there's a lot of them out there anyway and uh, take much care and it's nice to nice to, to have tried to help you hopefully I was mildly successful take care